grateful to be with all of you today. This morning's thought comes from Galatians 6, 9 and also 2 Thessalonians 3, 13. On the, upon this exhortation, do not be weary in well-doing. So Galatians chapter 6, verse 9 reads, and let us not grow weary in, well, in doing well, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. In uh -huh. 2 Thessalonians 3, 13, but as for you, brethren, do not grow weary in doing well. And then we also can bring to mind other scriptures such as in Hebrews that speaks of not growing weary in our minds. Faith in Christ calls us to action, Amen. action which is productive in growing our faith and the faith of others. The works of faith stimulate faith's advancement. Amen. And the more faith we have, the more trust in God will be integrated throughout our lives. The new life within finds expression in our actions so that the works we initiate the deeds we carry out, the way we designate our time, that which we lead, that which we help, all we prepare for can be called well-doing. We are given to that which is of God, to God, and for God. He is calling us into his good pleasure to will and to do it. And he is sanctifying us in all we do that we give everything to him. If a deed does not please him, and if it is something he cannot bless, then I am compelled to turn from it and put my mind and hands to holy use. God in Christ joins us to all that is good, excellent and beautiful, to that which is proven genuine and precious, pure, noble and praiseworthy. We are empowered by grace to set our minds on these things, and in thinking upon them, we are compelled to do them. To what scripture calls well-doing. And let us not grow weary in well-doing. This is an appeal to the new man to seek the grace of God, taking hold of his divine resources, which keep us from fainting, Renewing the inward man day by day, though our outward man perish, yeah. its strength being depleted. Though this is true, we need not become weary in well-doing. Our hearts do not have to fail, and our spirits need not be weakened while we serve the Lord. Amen. Weariness comes of doing works in our own strength, Amen. or from variant motives that while appearing good, are in some way distracted from him who is good. Mm -hmm. Working for self-reassurance will weary you. Mm -hmm. Working yeah. for praises of men yeah. will weary you. Mm -hmm. Working to earn God's favor will surely weary you. Amen. Working out of pridefulness yes. will weary you. Amen. But working in the power of the Holy Spirit will not lead to burnout. Sometimes we must assess our motives, and if we aren't receiving strength in that which we are doing, we must reflect honestly upon either what we are doing, why we are doing it, and what spirit are we doing it. The truth is we can be wearied in well-doing if we lose sight of Christ, who is our hope. Our scope of vision must look ahead as well as discern the present and reflect upon the past. Amen. Jesus has sanctified us. He is sanctifying us, and he will see us to the redemption of our souls. Just persevere. Yeah. Do not be weary, for in due season we shall reap if we do not faint. So I exhort you, let us not be weary. Yeah. Some examples of ways in which we can be mindful of this exhortation. When you suffer evils and hardships and troubles, you will be tempted to weariness, to become entangled with the affairs of this life. Seek to please God above yourself. He is able to give you understanding in all things, Scripture says. If you suffer with him, it is promised you shall also reign with him. If you continue 
in well-doing, sow now and reap later. Let us not be weary while persevering in prayer, either for our own needs or the needs of others. At times, we are in circumstances which last much longer than desired or anticipated. That in itself is not necessarily an indicator that we should relent in our prayers. Until shown otherwise, it is right to persevere in our requests before God. Some saints do not see their prayers answered concerning a specific request for years, yeah, yeah. sometimes not until after death. Still, it is right to pray for one another. Do not easily relent in your petitions. God is doing a work in you, even as you make your voice heard. We do not always, well, we never get to control how long we must endure a trial. Your brother or sister does not have that control either. So it is a blessing when brothers and sisters do not suffer compassion fatigue and move on to other things, but continue in prayer where continued strength is all the more required. So sow now and reap later. Let us not be weary in, so, in, uh, in serving one another. We all look for some outcome for our service, but at times we cannot see the impact of our obedience to God. It can seem like what we do may be unimportant, unappreciated, or go unnoticed. We must remember the one we serve and seek his power to do it. If we need guidance or encouragement, God is able to give it to us. Though we may test our faithfulness at times, when we do not receive the feedback or outcome we thought was necessary, will we still look primarily to God and not to ourselves? As we seek his favor, he will grant us strength in that which he sent us for and made us to do. So then we sow now that we may reap later. Do not be wearied in encouraging one another. We are encouraged and built up by mutual faith. And remember, faith calls us to action. We must never withhold good for pride's sake or refrain from insightful affirmations. You may be saying what no one else has said, offering necessary grace. And if others have affirmed the same truth you speak, your affirmation adds to its strength. Encourage, hi, encouragement highlights the power of God in us and towards us. If you have faith, then you are called to be an encourager to your fellow saints by your works and your words. Amen. Do not grow weary in well-doing. This helps us stand by God's grace. So now, reap later. You do not have to be weary. You do not have to faint in the way. So let us not grow weary in well-doing so that the works we do will be approved by Christ in the day we stand before him, forgiven of our unrighteousness and justified by his righteousness, which effectually works in us. When we were without strength, Christ died for us so that now by his life, grace reigns through righteousness we are now the servants of righteousness, moving in the strength of his grace. Let us therefore not be weary in well-doing, for if we do not faint in due season, we shall reap all we have sowed to our God. Let's open in prayer. Dear Lord, we ask that you would bless our minds, our hearts, and souls to be strengthened by your grace, to be moved by your power, Lord, let us not rely upon our own strength. And when we would be tempted to be discouraged, lift up our heads to see you. Make Christ shine more brightly in us than anything else that could be of a distraction. And Lord, we pray for encouragement and grace for those among us that each one as we fight this fight of faith, that we would persevere and be a strength to one another as we live by faith. We pray it in Christ's name. Amen.